Hi, everybody. It's Colleen Carberry here from Advanced Medical Integration. And I have with me today, Shalyn Whitmire and Bristy Richardson from our office in Chattanooga. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey, thanks for joining us again. Thanks for having us again. Yeah. You know, I was talking to the coaches and they said that they had many clients say mm -hmm. that they absolutely loved the last webinar where the two of you gave all the details and uh, what you did from day to day in your phase one and phase two implementation of the office in order to um, keep the office holding, I say, which is mm -hmm. keeping the threshold that we stay profitable. Um, and there was such interest in it that they wanted an update on where you guys were at. So um, I told them that we'd invite you back and that you guys can kind of bring back up to speed where, what you've been doing since we left off last time. So, so yeah, that's kind of what we're going to be covering today. Um, and I wanted to give a little bit of background in case somebody had not watched the, the previous webinar or just, just a reminder of some data. Um, we were all in, um, in Lake Tahoe, I wanna say it was in March, maybe the 13th, somewhere around there that weekend, on that, that Saturday when Donald Trump announced to the nation that on that Monday, everybody was gonna be sheltering at home. Basically when the world, we, as we know it, kind of changed. And so I, we talked about in that last podcast how on that Saturday night, you guys got together, you met, you came up with a bunch of ideas, we talked about them, and you deployed those ideas on Sunday. So Monday morning, when you were back in that office, you were already in action handling that announcement that came out with the sheltering at home. So we discussed the phases, different things you did, so I'm not gonna go back through them. Um, but we did leave off discussing saying that we were in the process of phase two of that, and that if things had changed, um, that you know, the circumstances with the country changed, something changed, we would maybe have to move to phase three, which was definitely more restrictive, cutting back staff, maybe laying staff off, um, doing whatever it took um, to get through the crisis, basically. And so I think at the time when we were talking about phase two and phase three, our thought was like, if the coronavirus got worse, um, things had to shut down even further, um, all medical offices had to shut down. Like we were thinking with that when we thought, what could possibly happen that would cause us to have to move to phase three or to take a, dra uh, a dramatically different set of uh, steps? Um, what we didn't account for was natural disasters, basically. It was like it didn't even dawn on us that something like that could happen. And um, yeah, a week ago Sunday, I think it was April 12th, um, the evening of April 12th through the night, um, Chattanooga, specifically within miles of our office, was hit with an F3 tornado. Mm -hmm. And I know when I lived in Georgia, um, many times there would be tornadoes, they would touch, they would pop down and pop back up. And it was almost like an area would just be exploded. And then it would pop back up and it, it, might, it might go for another mile before it dropped back down. Um, but that's not quite the type of tornado that hit Chattanooga. You know, I understand it was like 1500 feet wide. Um, it was on the ground most of the time for nine miles. It might have jumped a little bit, but it was mostly on the ground for nine miles. Mm -hmm. I think it was 135 to 145 mile an hour winds. Um, and 1,500 yards wide is pretty darn wide for the thing yeah. to be mowing straight down for nine miles. Um, so it was nothing that we expected that we'd have to encounter. We, we, you guys overcame so much with the, with the COVID-19, shelter at home, you know, keeping employees safe, keeping, keeping patients safe, doing whatever it took to keep those doors open, servicing our community. We never expected our community to be hit with something like this. So what I really want part of this, uh, this webinar to be with the both of you is um, the massive blows that businesses are taking. Right, I mean, we know Salt Lake City got hit with an earthquake, right? Um, here, you guys with a tornado, these natural disasters. Um, it's almost as if something is trying to stop business from functioning, you know? Um, and it's really, you know, you guys have been, I, I can't even tell you like how proud I actually am of the two of you in that office, um, that you just, every time you get knocked down, you get right back up again and you get right back up swinging. So what I wanted to do was take a moment because this is not something, you know, maybe our, all of our clients have been through as a tornado. I know every state has had its own, what they could consider tornado, maybe a state like Kentucky where all the doors have to close. That, you know, so some, something that's hit them, it's really hard and it could be so hard to overcome and you might not want to get back up and fight. Um, but really what I want to do is I'm going to turn it over to you, Shalane, just for a little bit because you got hit hard where you live. I know, uh, Bristy, you were in a different location where you live, but Shalene, you were right in the heart of it. So what, what happened? Tell me. 
Um, I mean, it was pretty scary. Uh, there were there were really like no warnings. Like they they issued a warning like as it was happening. It pretty much was. Yeah. It had it had already started at that point. So there wasn't really time for many people to prepare yeah. for it at all. So wow. um, luckily, I had my window open uh, just because we were expecting we were expecting bad weather. So um, kind of listening out. But yeah, the weather started getting. It was started getting really loud and the sky was getting lit up and um when we heard like i guess it, maybe it was lightning it hit a tree in our yard and so at that time we were like okay we probably need to go down to our basement and so we taylor and i we got our kids and we went down into our basement we pretty much stayed down there until we knew it was good to come out but what time did you go down to your basement um it was Almost midnight. Yeah, yeah. It was thirty. Yeah, it was. Our power went out too. So our power went out, and um, at that time, I was. We were just trying to get some candles and stuff, and uh, some like headlamps and stuff that we have that from my camping and whatnot. But I had already started to reach out to some some of the staff in the office to make sure that everyone was okay because I know a lot of our staff are. are yeah, in like, in this area, that big area that it hit. There's like five or six staff members that actually live in that area. Yeah. Wow. So wow. We had started a group message just to make sure that our our key people are okay and having call. them reach out to the rest of the staff, and mm -hmm. we sent a message out to you know our entire group message for all of our employees, just checking in on everyone. But yeah, by the time we made it, we were able to go outside and check in and see how bad things were. Um, I mean, my yard looked like a complete jungle. I don't know how my house didn't get hit, but you couldn't even see my yard. Um, the closest, I mean, it knocked, it hit our deck, uh, but it didn't actually hit the, the structure of the house. So we were wow. very fortunate, wow. but there are a lot of people who are in much worse positions. Mm -hmm. Their entire houses are demolished. They have mm -hmm. nothing, nothing left. Mm -hmm. um, there, I mean, still, as we speak, there's, it's been over a week now and there's still people who don't even have power. Yeah, our nurse practitioner just got power last night yeah. at like nine o'clock at night. Yeah, wow. Vincy, she's in the heart of it too, but mm -hmm. she, her, her house was fine and they're all okay. Wow. But What time were you able to come out of your house in the morning? Like, did you come out at three in the morning? Was it daylight? Like, we were, it was, it was probably around three o'clock or so. Yeah, when we got out and started checking things out because we started to smell gas. Mm -hmm. And so we weren't oh. sure what was um, one of the trees, there were seven trees that were down in our, in our, but right by our house. And one of the trees like had a gas line running right beside it. So it like wow. snapped the gas on. Um, but I, I would say, yeah, it was around three o'clock or so by the time we felt brave enough to go and check out things. Wow. Wow. And then tell me with your, um, uh, as far as like your neighborhood, where this, like, you couldn't get out, could you? Like, people couldn't move yeah, around. I mean, the road was busted up. There were trees. You could not exit. The yeah. pictures she sent me, I, I was like, you guys are so lucky that it did not hit your house. I don't know how it didn't hit their house. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, the thing is, is that, um, as I said, you know, when we were in Atlanta, there were times when it would touch down and it was like three houses, and then the thing would, you know, the tornado would bounce back off the ground. But mm -hmm. the, when I still, when you sent those pictures, Shalene, it was like, and we looked online, it was like, these were like whole, like whole sides of neighborhoods. Like one side of the street was fine. The other side was just mowed oh, down, yeah. like literally mowed mm -hmm. down. Yeah, it was I know at my church, they, they said that there were a hundred people, a hundred people whose homes were directly affected, like lost their homes. Yeah. Wow. So, so then tell me this now again, you know, cause we're here to talk about obviously COVID-19, right? Is it has, has dealt a major blow to businesses. It's, there's mm -hmm. no question about that. Um, our business, everybody else's business is a major blow. And we're all in this together, trying to share ideas and fight to see what does it take to, to survive. So, you know, are our guys going to have the same major blow? No. But is, the, is a crisis a crisis and how one reacts in a crisis? Yeah. And I think um, John Maxwell talks about that, that how, you know, it's after the crisis, it's not going to be remembering the tiny nuts and bolts of what one did, but how one reacted when crisis hit. And mm -hmm. out of Tahoe, crisis hit, you guys reacted. This, again, to me, this is, for the people in Chattanooga, almost as devastating 
as the COVID-19 shutting things down. People lost mm -hmm. lives, they lost their homes. It's almost as devastating. So tell me, Shalyn, it, during that night, I know you had a group chat going, checking on everybody. Um, mm -hmm. I know you didn't go into work on Monday. You couldn't get out of your driveway, basically. You couldn't mm -hmm. get there. Um, and so what, what action did you guys move into? Like, what did you, what, what, what did you do? How, what did you do for that week, this last week? Yeah, so I think we just have a thing for Sunday planning because that's what we did when we were, when we were in Tahoe. We did a lot of Sunday planning and that's what we did um, actually throughout the night. We went ahead and started to game plan on who could possibly, who, who we expected to come into the office the next day, who could possibly get there on time so they could go ahead and be reaching out to patients to make sure that everything was still fine to continue business as, as usual because, I mean, like we said, it was just a few miles from the office, so we weren't quite sure what to expect in terms of patient volume or if our power was going to be on right. or whatever the case may be. So we yeah. went ahead and started game planning throughout the middle of the night yeah. because we were all wide awake. You don't know. <laughs> <sleep. laughs> no. <laughs> we started game planning. Um, we started game planning throughout the middle of the night, and then um, once we, we got a final head count, we... You know, we had some staff members come in at usual time and go and reach out to patients, and we continued business. We, we stayed open. We stashed, you know, we wanted to be here for people, especially if they did get injured or had some extra pains or something. Yeah. So we did delay opening, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't by much. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, and I know that we happen to have two nurse practitioners, so mm -hmm. the, the other nurse practitioner was able to arrive to be there, right. because Nancy, I don't know when she was able to get out of yeah, couldn't get out exactly and same thing we have two chiropractors i know dr DePaul um couldn't get up from atlanta um and so he so i think that dr newbert came in right mm -hmm. and so we were we were covered there which is great and staff um mm -hmm. and then i know j having talked to you guys throughout the week then um and we heard more and more of our patients that were affected um tell me a little bit about you know chatting to me i was just you know it just just warms my heart to see how you know, I watched on the news all how the Chattanoogans pulled together. <laughs> really well. come together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what did you, what did the office do? Like you guys, I know, again, we're in the middle of COVID-19 trying to keep our doors open. This tornado then hits, right? Um, and you guys literally just shifted gear and went right into crisis number two. Got to handle it. So what did you guys do for the, the community? So one of the first things we did um, is set up a donation, a drive, which we knew would help those in our community um, for anybody to bring non-perishable items, water bottles, you know, any anything that was really necessary at the time for those patients. Because again, there are many that lost their homes completely. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also decided to start a little um, fundraiser, you could call it. And we put out a message to our social media that for every patient that came into our doors, um, we were gonna donate $10 to the Tornado Relief Fund. And we started that last week. Fantastic, yeah, really mm -hmm. fantastic. So again, you know, uh, and, and I take this because I know I talk to a lot of clients is that um, reaching out to help the community with what's going on right now. Um, the COVID-19, of course, is, is happening to everybody across the country, right? So that's everybody's crisis. Um, and and I, I, all of us are reacting in our ways to be able to continue to service our community. And here in, in Chattanooga with the second crisis hitting for, for, for all of you, um, to be able to also react to that crisis in such mm -hmm. a way that we're there for our community and still being able to continue the care to our patients. I think that's probably the underlying thing of both crises is how do we continue to service our community? Um, and most people know that AMI's mission is staying away from, from drugs to handle the bodily aches and pains. That, everybody pretty much knows that. We don't want people on opioids, Percocet. We don't want them in their medicine cabinet. And the only way to help prevent that, because people are in pain, there's no question about that, they're in pain, they need service or something to help them to relieve that pain. If all the offices across the country shut down, they have no choice but to turn to that medicine cabinet. Mm -hmm. So we know it's our duty to keep our doors open as much as possible, maintaining all of our, our cleanliness standards and everything we have to do to maintain delivering care that our community needs in order to keep them functioning. So, uh, you know, like I said, the, Everybody has the COVID-19 crisis. You guys have this additional crisis. So you did keep in mind, if people, if, if, they're, if people are devastated, and now, of course, in Chattanooga, they're out there with chainsaws cutting up trees, right? And I saw the community all pitching in and helping and bringing their trucks. And, and oddly enough, nobody was maintaining six feet because I think with the, pretty much the thought was like, 
we just lost our whole world. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yes, you can stand next to me. To have a home quarantine. <laughs> yeah, they actually made a statement that COVID was not their concern at this time. And so everybody just started helping each other out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 I can get that. It's like, if I need to lift this tree and you need to stand three feet next to me, you can stand three feet next to me to get this tree off my house. I, I totally get it. I totally get it. So, so I thank you guys for that. And I just want to tell you, it just demonstrates again how um, the resiliency and the persistence of being knocked down and getting back up and knocked down and getting back up. It, I think, Shalyn, you made mention to me in the beginning of the week, you're like, golly, like, if I get knocked one more time, like, right. it's like, what is the world doing to me? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then I, I, you know, at the end of Monday, because you guys were, I think I talked to you Monday evening, exhausted from trying to move trees and cut, you know, cut up trees. Mm -hmm. And you got up on Tuesday and it was like, I'm back at it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and up, up you went. So I understand a lot of the, you know, of our clients or, or, or people that might be listening to this, that when you get walloped, you might need to take that day or two to just go, you know what I mean? Like I'm down. Let me be, a, let me be down for a moment or two, but the, the winners get up. you got to get up and you got to fight and you got to fight in this crisis 10 times more effort now than it was when times were good. And I think the two of you demonstrate that. Well, it also helps too that we do have such a passionate staff that really do care about our community. They, they don't care what it takes. I mean, we had so many people, they didn't even question trying to get out and come in so they could make sure they could check on all the patients and make sure everybody was okay when this thing first hit. Um, and because of them, they, I mean, they add fuel to us because we actually have people that we can depend on. And when things like that happen and we have to take a day, we know that we have people that are out there doing 110% and we're not going to skip a beat. Yeah. That's so fantastic. Yeah, I, I agree because I was, I was very much able to rely on Bristy. Um, and not, and I didn't have that thought in my head at all that things were not going to be okay here, you know. So, and we we ended up again. We had all the providers we needed. We had all the staff we needed. About fifty percent of our staff couldn't get here, um, but we had people volunteering that weren't even fine and couldn't get in, and they wanted to be there for the patients. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Really you know, I'm reading, um, I'm reading Napoleon Hill again, now that I'm home. Okay. So I'm reading Napoleon Hill, the 16 lessons of success. I think that's the name of it, but it's his manuscript he wrote, which is like in lesson format. And the one that I was on, um, uh, talks about that, what you guys just said there, which is, you know, when one has a, uh, a definite chief aim, that's what Napoleon Hill calls it. Like, and for you guys, it's like that office will open come hell or high water. We will service our community no matter what. He says, you know, people who have that really high aim, when things happen, their attention doesn't actually get diverted and they don't go into agreement with it. Hey, this just happened and therefore I'm down, right? It's like as if it, not that it doesn't phase you. I'm not saying that it, the COVID-19, the tornado did not phase you guys, but it's like, this is so high level, this like, I will serve my community, that this kind of stuff is like, it's there and it's hard. But then that just means you guys, your persistence on the line and the effort on your line just gets stronger. It, literally, that's what I watch you guys do. Your persistence gets stronger and your effort gets more to overcome anything that's going to knock you off that purpose. Yeah. So I commend you guys for that. Thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I can tell you, Mike and I absolutely appreciate the two of you in, in Chattanooga what you do, because I'll tell you, what you guys do so well there enables us to do what we do so well with the AMI client. So, yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to kind of dial back a little bit now on um, uh, what we actually, since our last uh, podcast or webinar, um, there's, a, there's some, been some programs that either had already just been launched the last time we spoke um, that are now a bit more mature, or we've launched new programs. So I want to just speak to that just a little bit, because it, it again, is not... Um, when we put forth effort, it's not, you know, four weeks ago, we did something. We didn't just keep doing the same thing. We had to like create and create and create and create new things to keep pushing out into our community that we were there. So I know we talked last time we had just launched our immune boosting program, which is still out there. I know we do Facebook ads for that. Um, and I know that we have email drip campaign for that. And I can see by uh, numbers that we have great responses to that. People come in the office for immune boosting, uh, which we certainly um, uh, are able to deliver that. 
but we're also able to deliver our message then. Is that, now Bristol, you're on those lines, right? You have mm -hmm. that opportunity to really enlighten our public to what else we do, is that right? Absolutely, um, I, it doesn't matter what patient comes in, what type of immune boosting they're responding to, almost every patient, um, you, you would be amazed at the, the numbers that they're marking on their, their symptoms that they have outside of just wanting to boost their immune system. And it's a perfect opportunity to open the door with how we can address those as well with what we do here in our office. And, what better way to boost your immune system than to overall just get your body back to functioning correctly? Yeah. Very rare that someone is not interested in getting back to their, their full capability and being as healthy as possible, especially during these times. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I know that um, uh, I looked at uh, numbers and in the last five weeks we had um, 33 new patients come in the door um, that, that had, uh, a, you know, a workup. So a physical medicine workup. So we've got the immune boosting program. So we certainly have people coming in. They might have a vitamin push. They might have, um, you know, the, the vitamins, the nutritional supplements, right? Um, so we have that. I'm not counting those people. I'm talking about we had 33 people that opted to do a full physical medicine workup with x-rays, exam, and the, the whole thing, okay? And that's in the last five weeks. And of those 33, 30 people, I just looked before I got on here, actually opted for a full program with us three times a week full program which i go wow i mean like that's like 30 new people with us in the last five weeks you know mm -hmm. and i kind of go okay that's what the immune boosting program is that that we had okay um now what we're doing is we're looking at um we shalin now shalin is on the lines of, of of communication out to our public we didn't sit back and just do immune boosting. We thought, what else can we do? What else can we do? Mm -hmm. And I think, Shalyn, remind me if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe last Wednesday or Thursday, we kicked yeah. off our PME program. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was late. Yeah, it was late last week. But okay, that good. Week was okay, so it was a, it's a program that I know AMI is offering this program. All existing AMI clients, this program is part of your program. Uh, we have new people that have actually just come to AMI, which actually I think is pretty incredible. They came just to purchase this program because it's a program that we wrote, um, which is helping to deliver back and knee bracing uh, to our patients who are, um, you know, sheltering at home or coming into our office. And in light of Chattanooga with what's going on, so many people are out there, you know, cutting up trees, you know, taking all debris away. So we've got people out there doing manual labor that they might not normally ever do. Okay, so our, our bracing program is really supporting their low back during these activities, or if they were existing and treating with us, and now they're home and they can't treat, it's helping them so that they don't roll backwards and have to start from square one when they return. So that mm -hmm. program kicked off, okay, late last week, that's a kind. I did just look quickly again at the numbers. We've had 48 leads coming in from our Facebook ads, and today's, what day is today? Today, okay. That's probably maybe five days or four days of, 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 of leads coming in, okay? That's pretty incredible, responding to those types of ads of knee or back pain, mm -hmm. yeah. So again, created something, launched it straight to our public. These are not existing patients. Um, the response has been incredible with our community. I know this week is when we're starting to do these telemedicine. Um, mm -hmm. These are actual telemedicine visits to help people to handle this pain at home, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. So. I look at this and I go, okay, the immune boosting program, people are coming in. I know we have the DME Facebook campaign. Um, we work with aligned vectors, right? Wednesday at aligned vectors. Mm -hmm. And um, Shalyn, tell us how we're using that platform, that text platform to stay in contact with our people. How are we using it now? It was not what it was designed for, but we're using it now for it. Yeah, so we are, so we're using his Wednesday's program aligned vectors for a few different things. So. We are using it to stay in communication with our patients who their treatment have gone on hold since COVID. Um, and they've on, they're on hold due to miscellaneous reasons, but to keep our communication in with them. And then if we have any specific offers that we want to send out uh, just to generate new, new leads, uh, if we feel like we need a boost in numbers, we're sending out different offers through there too. So. Great, great. And then is the staff continuing to call patients each day? Check. Okay. Yeah, we're calling, we're, we're doing, um, before we, we used to just do like a confirmation text message and now we're doing a actual uh, phone call to confirm all, all visits uh, the okay. day before. But then in addition to that, we have um, like Dr. Cole primarily, he's calling all of our patients once a week who have 
phone on hold as well, just to keep that communication in place. Mm -hmm. uh, that way it's not like by the time all this is over, we reach out and we're like, hey, are you coming back? So <laughs> I want to add to that too, because him calling weekly, like every week we have two or three patients that are on hold, go ahead and start to come back. So it's not that a lot of these patients are waiting until this is all over. Because, you know, honestly, in some states, we don't really know for sure when that's going to be, but we really think we're about to see the end of this here in Chattanooga. And he is... I mean, he's, he's getting every week more and more people. We just had two more people come back this morning that have been on hold. Wow. Well, you know, it was, it, funny thing is, is that um, I think one of you mentioned to me that, you know, you look at the schedule and people who, you know, before COVID-19, they were on the schedule, right? And now they're red because they're sheltering at home. So obviously they're not going to come in. And you look at that schedule. Well, one, you just added 30 new people to this schedule in the last five weeks. So they're coming in. Then you look at all that red. And you realize the amount of effort that you guys put forth to bring those new people in, to replace the people sheltering at home, the sheltering at home people, because you guys stayed in contact with them, they know, we know they're coming back, right? Right. So there's going to be a point when all of a sudden it's like everything just doubled, like literally the whole exactly. practice will double. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, D Donald Trump last um, Thursday, you know, when he addressed the nation and his, uh, uh, his, his, every day he addresses the nation, but, um, and one of the uh, representatives, his representatives came out and did the phases. And so I don't, I don't actually know what phase Tennessee would be in, um, but that was the countdown, which was on the 15th of, of April, was supposed to be a 14 day countdown to open up the country, which would be like May 1st, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. I think every state went on that countdown. He did say there were some states, probably some of the, 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 less, the more remote states out in the, in the, um, in the Northwest, whatever, that had already met that, that the mm -hmm. declining number and probably could start opening. I don't, like I said, I don't know what Tennessee is at, but I do know that the countdown is starting. And yeah. what that is doing is it's giving people hope and yeah, they're venturing back out. Um, so tell me this, you guys, what do you guys see? Because, you know, our last time we talked, it was, we were going into that. We knew the next weeks were gonna be the darkest weeks last time we talked. We've gotten through the darkest weeks, and golly, you just got walloped with a tornado, right, with this. Um, it's We're coming out now. Now, you know, it's not going to be just like, uh, open the doors and everybody's out. We get that. But how do you guys see the future for what you're doing? Like, the effort that you're putting forth now, getting what you're getting, and then what do you see the future, and how much continued effort do you think you're going to have now that you've, what you've done? I think this being like such hard times for everybody and seeing how our team pulls together and we produce so we've produced so much with the you know what little we've had there's no reason why that attitude doesn't continue and we truly continue to 10x the practice I mean that's we see what we're capable of that's for sure yeah, yeah. I agree I mean I feel like this has put us in a unique position to where we can now we, we now see what type of potential we have and We've been able to see more, I guess, uh, strong traits coming out of some of our teammates, mm -hmm. you know, um, rising to the occasion and seeing what types of things that they've been able to produce has been pretty eye-opening. Mm -hmm. um, just, I mean, we, we may not be seeing record high numbers right now, but the fact that we've held strong week after week mm -hmm. really speaks high volume. And the creativity we've seen from our staff, I'm so excited for to come from all of them because a lot of these ideas we've come together as a team and you know we've gotten feedback from each of them and created really wonderful things these last few weeks yeah. let me ask you this um because i you know I, I again we're we're in this conversation so we have it we have staff right um that all of them of course we think are wonderful but it sounds like what i'm hearing from you guys is you've actually seen staff really grow during this right really like really grow as, as part of the team mm -hmm. um some that you didn't expect right that that so so for you as 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 managers running the company um can you tell me do, do you see like now you see potential in certain staff members of, of growth and things that they will be able to do in the future for, with you Oh, absolutely. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, many, like she said, creative ideas. And it's like every day is like a positive thought, a positive, you know, some us uplifting each other. Like, what are we going to do next? What's our game plan? 
uh, let's see it all the way through to the end. Mm -hmm. And so it's just been, it's been really, like I said, a unique time for us to be able um, to see what our staff are like under pressure. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that is phenomenal. That is, that is really phenomenal. Well, I can tell you this, that, um, and there is no question about leadership, right? The, the, um, a group is only as strong as its leaders. There's, there's never a question on that. So the two of you, again, I commend you both because there had to be a, a weak leader, right? A, a group will dissipate. They will all go home and not want to come in. Strong leaders will actually, will actually help people to rise is what happens. And that's mm -hmm. what it, again, we never had this quite this conversation on the staff. So yeah, I'm really, that's really great to hear that you put it, giving situations where people could actually grow, you know, grow professionally basically in it. So that's, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this now, um, <clears throat> effort. Okay. Obviously, the only way we are where we are right now, you guys are, right? Which is you've kept that business at a threshold that is still um, uh, above, it's, it's above the threshold basically to maintain itself. Um, mm -hmm. Do you see yourself rolling back to the effort level that you had prior? Or do you think you've learned something? I would feel that? like such a failure. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. And then, you know, I think something that I hear from clients a ton, and it sounds like you guys are the same way, you know, it used to be where you think, I don't want to keep calling the patients because I'm going to bother them. I'm going to bother them. I'm going to bother them. Well, now you guys sound like you communicate like crazy with the patients. Mm -hmm. And you realize more communication actually means a more embraceive patient who comes yeah. in part of the group. So I, what do you think of that? That, that, that more conversation than less with a patient? Well, we, so I'll speak on that in terms of t statistics because not just have we like, had the new patients coming in, been putting out these, you know, the new types of advertisement and getting creative with our team and everybody pulling together. But in terms of like just statistics, um, our show rate for our physical medicine patients has not fallen like what is 85%. It hasn't no, dropped no. below 85% throughout no. the past five weeks. So, I mean, there were two weeks that we had 90, there was one week we had 91% and the week after we had 92%. So, wow. I mean, wow. And you contribute that to greater communication. communication right? Absolutely. Not less. And we, yeah, make it, we make it very well known to our patients in the beginning that the only way we, we get you better is if we keep you accountable. So you're going to hear from us all the time. Yeah. And they, they actually respect that. They like that. And that's yeah, how it you is. Know, it's kind of funny because there's always the consideration, like, I don't want to bother somebody. They have a busy life. I'll just text them a quick reminder kind of thing. You know, but now, of course, because of the COVID-19 and there, there's no such thing as business as usual, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, do whatever it takes. So yeah, I know that. Really <laughs> yeah, since all this has been going on, we've had, I mean, pretty much everybody has been saying this every day, but input equals output, or I'm sorry, output equals, however, what, however it goes. What you put out is what you get back. Yeah, so we've been saying, we've been saying this a lot because the more the more messages we're sending out to staff, the more calls that we're making, the more effort we're putting into things, the the more reward we get from it. Not just yeah. for us, but for our, the community in general, for the amount of people that we're able to help during this situation. So, yeah, we just keep putting it out there. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, for, to me, just to kind of like, because I know we're kind of winding down to the end here. Um, you know. You unexpected. You're in the middle of a, the COVID nineteen. You're in the middle of a crisis. You're trying to help a. Uh, uh, you're trying to help to to get a business to survive. Because I know anybody listening to this is trying to help a business to survive. And it's kind of funny because as you put forth effort, you have no. Every step we take is unknown. Like literally, right? Every. So I know sometimes we'll talk, and it's like there's no time to do a little pilot study on anything. Like hey, let's give this a try for a couple of weeks and see if it works. It's like, no, let's give this a try massively, as Grant Cardone says, 10x. And then we have to decide in 24 to 48 hours whether it's working or not, dial it back and do something else because there's no time to stop and think about things and, and, and survey people. You just have to come up with an idea and do it, come up with an idea, do it, and do it with such massive effort that you get your results back almost immediately. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of, I take away from it going, okay, that's, that's actually, we learned a lot in a short period of time oh, absolutely. on how we could better service our community and better stay in communication. And I don't know that, you know, I think our clients and the, a lot of the public listening could probably say the same thing. 
I don't know that we'll ever dial back to business as usual with just a, just our text. Yeah. See you soon. And they're like, you know, no response back. Like it's, it's business has changed how we do business now. And we're, for us, we're way more involved in our patients' lives and, and integrated mm -hmm. with them at this point. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Anything else you guys want to offer our group? Anything that maybe comes to mind that maybe you did or so, something that is like, you know, I don't know, any, any other wisdom from either of you? I mean, if you're not already having a morning meeting with your staff and getting your mind right before your day even begins, then I would definitely recommend that because I feel like that is something that really keeps us all going. Um, because there's a lot of obstacles, you know, there's a lot of obstacles that we've had to face. We don't want to sit here and tell you everything's been super easy because trust me, it really hasn't. But, you know, each day is a new day and a new opportunity. And so you just have to keep, you just have to keep going and you have to keep getting creative and you have to make sure that all of your team is operating at the same, you know, the same level and standards and be, be as positive as you can be mm -hmm. because there's always going to be a, you know, a solution to every yeah. problem that you face. And I would definitely want to add to that. There's so much negative around us and they are subjected to that every day. So you have to be that positive influence and you have to be that example because if you want them to perform, you, I mean, you have to show them what, what you want from them. Yeah. And that's been something really big for us. When you say morning meeting, I mean, I know what it was always, you know, you guys always had a morning meeting. Tell me now, what is like, I, I know it's not long. Tell, get, tell all the viewers, what is that morning meeting that you have? So, Christy is more of our cheerleader in the <laughs> office. So, she, she, she runs that show. But, um, you know, we start with talking about, well, we, we read off a quote. Um, and it's always quote. Um, what, do you, what do you mean a quote? What does that so, mean? we do some sort of motivational, inspirational quote. And what's nice is we always pick quotes that are conversation starters, for sure. And so it's not just, okay, read this quote and then go about your business. We read this quote and it, it hits people. And it's so funny because the staff now, they're like, wow, that one was so powerful. That one really got me this morning. And then everybody just starts feeding off of each other. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a great way to get people woken up in the morning and to really just engage on being positive. Where do you get your quotes from? Everywhere. Any, anything that I, I mean, any, mainly, okay, here's my three people. Dave Anderson. Grant Cardone, now Brandon Dawson, um, but there's a lot of content that I follow on Instagram and Pinterest, and I mean, some of the things are so good not to share, so I actually keep a little folder, and every time I'm scrolling through this and I see one for the staff, I'm like, oh, that's a good one, that's a good one, and I'll save it to cool. share in the meeting, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and then we will actually um, go from sharing that quote and kind of getting everybody hyped up to picking about three or four people that morning to share a goal that they have for the day. Um, and what's nice about that is like the staff will hold each other accountable. Cause it's like, once they hear that goal, will they check in on them? Cause I think one day I had set a goal for myself of scheduling like three appointments by the morning shift from the um, home calling we were doing. And I remember one of the staff came in and they heard the number they were like, they're like, Bristy, oh my gosh, you're halfway there. So they, they pay wow. attention to those things to try to like push each other to be, to be better. Um, and then we share patient wins because that's something we never want to become numb to. Um, and I mean, again, that's one of those things that each other feeds off of. So one person will share what this person said and then the next person pops in. Oh yeah, well, I saw this patient do this, or I heard them talking about this as well. And here's what they told me. And it just really engages them. And again, really uplifts the staff to get started with their day. Oh, that's fantastic. And that's a, every morning you guys do that? Every morning. Wow. Yeah, I know I've sat in on them before and, and I can see how um, how valuable it must be now just to kind of like everybody comes in from after hearing the news and bad news all night long just to recenter them and focus them on what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so fantastic. Yeah, well, thank you so much, you guys. And uh, I'm really glad to have had you back and to be able to kind of update the world on to what you guys are doing and um, getting up every day and just slugging it out. Um, I feel like we're coming into the back end of this that movement will start happening over the next couple of weeks people will come out start coming back um, and i actually kind of look forward to almost like a renewed sense in the business and the way we look at um, the effort that we put out because with that higher effort now it's not going to seem like hard you know eight weeks ago it would have been like oh my gosh that's a lot of effort now it's like that's normal now for us that exactly effort. yeah super excited for that so thanks again you guys for coming on and um 
We'll talk soon. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.